Hello everybody, welcome to the next installment of Appalachian Trail Talk. Uh, this is my leg number 25. Uh, it starts on the 7th of May 2017 and once again we're in the 2017 AWOL guide that we're using. And uh, if you want to watch this section, it starts on, uh, on day uh, 26 of the flip-flop series. And um, so sometimes it's not quite as, as easy and clear what a person should do next. And this is one of those, one of those drills that I had to kind of go through in, in my mind and kind of lay things out. And, and by now, if you're, if you're northbound from Springer, you know what your body can do distance-wise, okay? Now, this section, of, this section of rock is still pretty brutal through here, and there's some, some kind of decisions you need to make. So we, 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 let, we ended up, we left off at Port Clinton, if you remember, okay? And uh, what's coming up is Lehigh Gap, which is the rocks, okay? And, uh, and there's also Palmerton there that you could go. There's a, there's a hostel there, and there's a, a resupply as a grocery store. Um, after that, you've got a place called Wind Gap that where you could go in and, and uh, you know, get a shower and do some laundry, maybe do a resupply, I think. I can't remember about the resupply or not, but I know there's there's a there's a there's laundry in a hotel there, and then you've got the Delaware Water Gap, okay, which is the end of Pennsylvania, um, and there's a couple there's a hostel there, there's an, an older broken down hotel there that's kind of being renovated at least at the time, and um, and so but there's a but there's another challenge. It's not just the you know distances between you know where do I go, um, you know for me at this point in time, um, I'm doing about. 10 to 12 miles a day on the rocks. Okay, that's what I could do, and I still got injured. All right, so so for me, you know, if I'm doing 10 miles a day, you know, that's that's four days to get to Port Clinton. You know, that's not bad for carrying food. I, I, I can do five. I hate to do six because it just seems to be too heavy. Um, you know, here's here's six days, maybe just a little left to go all the way to Wind Gap. But I started hearing some some stories at the time that, that uh, the locals weren't real, real friendly down here for some reason, if I remember right. Um, and it wasn't necessarily quite as easy to get into town from there. I think that turned out to be not quite right, because then after I got past there, I started talking to people come behind me, they'd gone in there and there was no problem. So I'm, I'm not sure what that was um, ahead of the event for me. And of course, then you got the Delaware water gap here, and that's a total of you know, uh, 78 miles. And with my body, that's that's too much food to have to carry. So I know I'm going to have to break that up. And then complicating issues down here, as you climb up the rocks and super, the last the last water is at this uh, this outer bridge shelter. When you come down, you're going to climb, climb down out of the mountains and cross the river here. Uh, and then you are going to then start back up a huge ascent up some rocks. And then the next shelter, though there is a there is a little water source, not too far from the shelter. Uh, I think at about the eleven and a half mile mark, but you have to go 0. 0.6 east. And even then, there's recommendations that you don't really get water upon this this uh, this super fun site. So, you most people are probably going to still steer clear from it unless steer clear from it unless they're really really desperate. So so water. Uh, is 15.7 miles apart. Now I, I consume, you know, by this time I, I've pretty much have figured out what my body needs. I need a liter every four miles. That's pretty much, that's pretty much standard for me. That's, that's my minimum. I can, I can do more than that, but I can ration and, and be careful and kind of conserve the sweat and, and hike easy and not be too aggressive. And I can do, I can do a liter in four miles, but that's what my body requires. So for me to do this, um, you know, you're talking about carrying four liters of water. That's a lot of water. And I didn't have the containers anyway to be able to carry that. I've only got uh, my fill bag, which is, a, which is 900 liters and then two liter bottles. So I don't have basically just shy of, of three liters. So, um, so this, is a, this is a consideration. You know, if you're a fast hiker, you know, if you're a, you know, if you're a early riser 71 doing 25 miles a day, this is probably no big deal. Carry your three liters and, uh, and go for it. Um, I couldn't. So what I ended up choosing to do is I broke this section up into, into two legs of about the same distance. You know, this is a, that's a 40.8 and this is a, a 39.7. So I kind of broke it up into, into, into two sections. 
that way I didn't have quite as much distance I had to go here to be able to get to get the water that I needed. Um, um, let's see. So um, that's kind of that's kind of the, the the summary of 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 how I sat down and and figured out what I was going to do. Now, <clears throat> so the, so this will be leg twenty six, kind of. But I ended up breaking this up funny because what I ended up doing in is, yes, I went into Palmerton, but then in this next leg, I actually do a slack pack south over the Super Fun site back down into here. Then I come back and then I hike um, Stealth Camp and then I hike into Delaware Water Gap. So I, I broke it up a little bit uh, and that just worked for me. And uh, each person can do what, what works for them. And so that's an overall view right now of, of, of what we're going to have. So let's get to it. Okay, so um, I, got a, uh, I got my shuttle back out of, uh, out of uh, Hamburg, back up here to Port Clinton, and then uh, resumed the hike, uh, made, made the climb up along the ridge lines, a little bit of rocks, um, en route to uh, Windsor Furnace here. And... Uh, um, in, in route here, I came across my first lady slippers and I know, uh, there's some viewers out there that, uh, that really like to see those. I'm going to throw a picture in here as well as a, a photograph of the sign as you come into, into kind of Windsor, into Windsor Furnace, uh, close to the shelter area, but it's, it's a park. And, uh, and, and as you get again to the park, the, if I remember right, the trail was, was, was relatively nice as long as you were in kind of in the park area. So, um, let me, let me show you a couple photographs of those, uh, items here. Um, I do remember going into the uh, into the shelter. It wasn't it was not a bad shelter area, and if you uh, so if you if you if you just kind of came down here into Port Clinton, went to the post office, grabbed your a resupply box, you could jump back on the trail and you could get get to here relatively uh, uh, um, easily. Especially if you if you've made the time for the before the post office closes, I think there's enough time. If you wanted to, you can continue up here to this to this shelter. Now, what was unclear to me is you have this uh, this blue blaze trail over to this Hard Rock campground, and then you get this yellow blaze trail to the Hard Rock campground. But then when you get down here, uh, right before this pinnacle, which I'll show you a picture of, there was a this this blue blaze trail that's a, a mile and a half that reconnects. The AT back to the shelter. Well, that was not clear on the other side as it was, as it is on this on this north side. And so, if you think about it, if you're not a purist and you wanted to cut off a lot of miles, you know that that distance there is what about just shy of seven miles, so a six six point is it a six point seven? Trading off for a one point five sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Except when I looked down this Blue Blaze Trail, it was it was nasty overgrown. I think you'd be bushwhacking that whole mile and a half. I don't think it's used that often. At least that was my impression. And there wasn't anything on this side saying, hey, take this Blue Blaze Trail to the pinnacle <laughs> either. Okay, so I think this is kind of an unknown. Uh, I'm not sure I would I would risk getting down in here bush bushwhacking in this area. So... Anyway, it's but hey, it's your hike. So if you want, if you want to do that, you can. Now, as was interesting, what this pinnacle was going to be, and uh, let's see, where's the pinnacle? Oh, the, I'm, I'm sorry. The okay, the pulpit rock that was pretty. It was that was pretty obvious here with this uh, straw, uh, this 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 park here, and then you actually come up to the pinnacle. Okay, and uh, you can see it from the trail and. Uh, um, it was it was kind of neat. It's literally just a big pile of rocks. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so coming off uh, coming off this pinnacle, you you kind of come down a Forest Service road. It's still pretty rocky. It's a it's a it's a good it's a good Jeep trail, I would say, um, but it does give you a little bit of relief uh, on the uh, on a lot of the the really hard rocks. Uh, that's when you come down and you, and, and you notice this is where that, that area was where you could come, you know, shortcut back to Windsor Furnace if you needed to. And, 
as, as you come down the Forest Service Road, there's kind of a turn in the trail, and right there on the edge, overlooking the west and the beautiful sunset, if it had been a sunset that night, but the rain was coming in, so um, I, I went ahead and set up my camp. Um, got my meal hydrating and then the rain came in so I didn't I didn't get I don't remember getting much of a sunset unfortunately that night but this would be a great place to to set up camp uh, it would be this would have been really nice to get down to here where they got the enclosed bunk rooms but I, I just I just ran out of daylight that day that's one of the problems you have when you when you're coming back off of a zero or even a near when you're in town resupply and a lot of times you don't get to get on the trail at 6 a.m. It's it's based upon when your ride is going to take you back. So so if I remember right, it was more like a 9, 9.30 before I got on the trail. So I ended up just not being able to quite get down here to um, to Eckerville. That did set up, though, um, the next day, the opportunity to get um, uh, to the Allen Allentown Hiking Club Shelter is where I ended up staying the night. If I remember right, it was pretty nice. Uh, this This was pretty rough throughout this uh this area if i remember right and uh i think during uh and then past then past the allentown hiking club i think is where you end up yeah getting to to knife edge that i had mentioned in a previous video and bare rocks that's where that's where that is at um and I think I've got uh, I've got like four photographs here. I'll show you. I'll show you. I'll show you the 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 I think bare the bare rocks. I'll show you a knife edge first, and the bare rocks, and then I'll throw you a couple of views in here so you can kind of kind of see what that's like, and then the, the climb up to to the bacon oven knob, and you can hardly see it right there, but this is just a nasty big pile of rocks. Oh, it was this was this is this is a rough day. That's one of the reasons I ended up I stopping by bake oven. I was done. I mean, this this looks like it should be fast, nice ridge line walking, but that in Pennsylvania that just means rocks, 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 rocks. So anyway, stayed the night uh, there at at Bake Oven. Um, probably I stopped a little bit early if I remember right. Ended up having some other other hikers coming in that were northbounders a little bit later on, uh, but I was my I was just kind of torn up, and you know I'm still coming off that 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 uh, hamstring injury, so. Things are kind of moving a little bit on the slow side, so and you let me um, let me show you the at least the pictures here of, of Knife's Edge and some of those other views and some of the rocks. Right, looking at my my picture collection, I actually think I do have a, a photograph of what kind of some of this this bake oven knob uh, looked like, and I will um, I will I will throw that in here for you. Okay, once you once you kind of leave the bake oven knob shelter, you're lure, you're you are lured into a sense of of I guess security nicety. Uh, you're on a Forest Service road, and it's really nice. And it's a couple of miles of so some really nice, nice walking and some descents. And then you, and then you get back to some 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 really really hard rocks, where you're you're doing some boulder scrambles and kind of the first of what's going to be coming up in New York, as far as you just kind of come up to this big rock pile where you have to start uh, navigating up and around these big big boulder piles. And I've got a couple of pictures here. I'll show you. Okay, so once you once you encounter those those really bad rocks here, um, it might be a little hard to, to tell it on the video here, but maybe you can see the line. You're going to start this descent, and you're going to start down, and you're going to come to the Outer Bridge Shelter, and this is the last place you can get water for, what did we say that was, um, what, 16.7 miles? Or fifteen point seven, so fifteen point seven miles before you come to your your next water source. So, um, if you are going to make the climb up Lehigh, you definitely need to. I would say hydrate here, drink so much you can't stand it anymore, 
and then take as much as you're going to need to get to that next water source. And, and keep in mind, you're going to have a, uh, a huge climb. Anyway, so you're going to come down here, going to be a huge descent, and you're going to cross over the Lehigh River. You're going to come up to the traffic light, and then you got to turn right and go up to the next traffic light and cross the street because you're not allowed to cross here. I think if I remember right, there's a big fence up that you so it basically makes it impossible for you to cross there. So you have to go make a right turn, go up to the next light, cross at the light, and come back down. And then you can make the, the descent up. Um, there is something to, that, that you should know about here. Um, let's say you are really, really afraid of heights. And I'll show you why. You, you if, if you are, you might want to know about this. This Blue Blaze Trail, there's a bypass trail. And it's used, especially in the winter time, when people are hiking in the winter, or when it's really badly storming or... Uh, icy, you know, snow and ice, things like that. There is a, there is a bypass trail that, that kind of runs, it doesn't climb up the rocks. It runs, it runs kind of up the edge of the mountain. So it'll, it'll take a, it kind of takes a, like a little bypass literally. Okay. And cuts off this huge rock pile. And, uh, and so that is available to you. Okay. And it's, and it's like, yes, you may, you know, if you're a purist and you want to pass every white blaze, Okay, then it's going to be a problem for you. If you are, I'm hiking from Georgia to Maine, and you know you don't want to get hurt, you want to do a little risk management, or you're just scared of heights and, and huge boulder scrambles, then you might want to want to want to take this. Now I hiked, I hiked south. Okay, I did, this, I did, I did a, I'll talk about this next time, but I did a slack pack here from Smith Gap. And once you get, your reward is once you get up to the top here, there's a nice trail for a few miles through here. Okay, there's there's some nice trail, no rocks. Uh, you do have to watch for rattlesnakes, okay? Um, especially in this, in, you know, maybe, well, even the time of the year I was there in May, you still need to start watching for them because they're, they're coming out of their winter dens. Um, so this is a really nice trail. But let me, let me show you. Now, I took this picture not on the top because you, you're going to come down a ways and then you got some rock scrambles you come up over and then there's a, a big painted flag on the rocks and that's kind of on the opposite side you you can only see it looking south so just as you crossed over that it was a great picture looking down to the river and uh, let me show you that now Okay, so as you can see, that's a that's a it looks pretty scary steep, and it it's pretty much it pretty much is like that, um, but uh, but there's good handholds and uh, and as long as you're smart and, and take your time, there's a pretty good descent. Now, if you decide to go into Palmerton, um, you know you do not want to try and, and walk along the road there. It's pretty dangerous. Here's information that talks about the that the Blue Blaze Trail. There is a there, I think it, there is a description of how you can get to a trail where you can walk in, okay, into there, and there's got to go through this this kind of this gate area. But but honestly, that this is this would be so much of a pain based upon what I saw. Um, hey, why not why not get a ride in if you can? You know, use Uber or maybe go in and stay somewhere. Um, so, and when you're looking on here, you see this Burt's restaurant. That doesn't jump out of you as a place to stay, but when you look at the Palmerton description in the AWOL guide, okay, it does have this Burt's restaurant, okay, and you can ask about an, uh, an overnight stay in a shower, and they have converted uh, some office area on the back of their, their store into a uh, into a nice little, I think they have four bunks and a, and a couple of rollaway beds and a little sitting area. Um, and uh, then there's a there is a, a bathroom and a shower that's you have to go outside and you know, walk about I don't know twenty feet or so and then it's a, it's that's like they have remodeled this this area for just the hikers to be able to use. So this was this was this was a nice day, and you can eat right there at the restaurant. Um, and they uh, at the time they offered you know uh, transportation uh, if you you know they can pick you up from the trail take you back to the trail and if you want to do what I did and did a slack pack then you pay for that and they'll go all the way to Delaware Water Gap okay for uh 
uh, for, for, for doing the northbound stuff and, and picking up. So, um, and then, so there's Burt's and there's, uh, this country harvest market's just up the street, not too far of a, of a walk. And of course there's, you know, there's Dunkin' Donuts where people love that subway, plenty of places to eat down here. Okay. So anyway, that's, that's what I ended up doing. And, uh, it kind of tended to, to work out well for me. And, uh, so, all right. So, so the next leg will be my leg 26, where we pick up with the, uh, with the, the slack pack hike and then into Delaware water gap. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. <music>